Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 3 of Daredevil. Okay, so before I really get into spoilers and stuff like that, I'll kind of give my general non-spoiler review. Really liked it. I think it's a great season. Honestly, it's a hard, like, toss-up to determine which season I like the best. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like season, this season kind of starts off a little slow in certain regards, but I feel like, you know, I don't, I don't know, it's really hard to say because I feel like it needs to, like, start off slow, especially considering, like, where Matt's story left him at and also all that he's going through. So I think that slow build-up was necessary. It just feels a little slow at the beginning, but I feel like it kind of quickly picks up. But, uh... I like a lot of the dynamics that you know a lot like a lot of the situations that went down this season. Well, obviously the villains. We kind of obviously I'll go into that more spoiler wise. But I really like Matt's story this season. Just kind of the struggle he's kind of going through and what it kind of made him discover about himself in the long run. So I mean, uh, if you have not seen the season, I highly recommend you check it out. It's well worth your time. Um, I mean, like, legitimately, when it's all said and done, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, like, once you've watched this season. You don't even have to listen to the rest of this recording, like, and come back, like, to hear my spoiler talk. I'd be so interested to hear what you think, like, what season's your favorite. Because I know for some people, it's like, yeah, season two's probably their favorite just because of The Punisher. It might be just because of Elektra. Maybe they just like season one. You know, like, just let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments down below, so. So, like I said... My my general thoughts are just done. If you haven't seen the season, check out the season. It's really worth your time. And so from this point on, I will be going into spoilers, so do keep that in mind. You have been warned. So crazy, crazy things went down this season. Um, I was wondering how they're gonna handle, first of all, the whole Matt situation. I figured there was gonna be the whole like, yeah, he didn't tell Karen and Foggy he came back because the whole point was separating himself. And it did seem like I did kind of nail on on certain aspects of like why he would be back in a black suit because he even says it later on. He doesn't wanna wear the Daredevil suit anymore because he's outgrown what it meant because he's kind of changed his thought process on how he, because before he kind of believed everything was kind of like, hey, maybe God's got a plan, but for him, he's kind of lost, like he doesn't, he kind of has cursed God to a certain extent, because for him, it's just like after everything that's happened, it doesn't get covered a lot in the uh, show, but I mean, there's a big question of like, well, what about Electra? Is she buried underneath Midland Circle? I mean, I'm quickly thinking about, well, what about uh, Madame Gao? We haven't even seen her pop up, even in, like, uh, Iron Fist Season 2. We know at the end of Defenders, she was still around and kicking, so maybe she ended up finding Elektra. I mean, especially everything that happened to Elektra. I mean, who's to say it would have been that easy to take her out? But uh, Matt just simply got swept away um, and was found on, what was it, like a beach? Like, after he kind of, like, got flushed out, like, a few, uh, sewer system and stuff like that, so that's crazy, so... And I love that because immediately, first of all, the whole uh, Maggie situation, I felt like something was up because it's like the moment uh, uh, Lantum was kind of like, oh, he's he's Jack Murdoch's boy. She stopped immediately. I was like, oh, so that means something to you. I thought that's kind of interesting because even from like the trailers, I was like, that's got to be Matt's mom. But the more time went by, I was like, oh, maybe that's not his mom. And then it's kind of like even more passage. I'm like, that's got to be his mom. The fact of the matter is she changed her tune so quickly She because she's kind of sarcastic and kind of like mean towards him sometimes like especially like when matt kind of gave up hope and everything and she was like oh yeah like look at those those uh how look at those kids those cowards trying to keep up like she was being super sarcastic to him which i like that a bad, uh, part of her personality even at one point when matt's kind of joking because she's like oh you know look at you kind of changing up your style he's like oh, you know it looks better on you than you know just punching people she's like and he's like how do you know i'm not just adding this style uh to me punching uh to me punching people and she's like was that you making a joke she's like oh that's good look at you about to crack a smile and everything so i thought that was kind of pretty neat because i just like the way she approached him the fact that the matter is she wouldn't back down i was like that's got to be his mom and in the long run i was because i was so curious to see what his mom's storyline was going to be i was like is it going to be something like do super deep and darker and secret i mean it turned out not to be i, I think it's actually a good aspect it's like her story was very human. It's like when she was younger, you know, like, you know, uh, she fell in love. She had a baby. But, you know, at that time, it's like she didn't know what postpartum depression was. Like, you know, like after giving birth, like, you you know, it's, it's not something that's your fault. But because she's a religious girl and everything, she just chalked it up to like, oh, God, God, like, turned on me, like, because it punished me because I committed a sin. And she exchanged that one sin for another by leaving her son behind, like. Because she was there even when Matt was, you know, there after his dad died. And so that was so interesting uh, to me that, um, 
even in all that time, even after his dad died, she still didn't say anything because it was it was a lot of like regret because it's like it's like I have no right to go back now, especially after your your dad died. It's like I'm just going to cause you more pain. And it's like, oh, and she even talked about how ironic it is that basically it took God kind of having his own plan because it's like he brought the devil of hell's kitchen to her doorstep. And it's like, it turns out it's my son. It gave her a second chance. And I thought that was kind of a nice storyline. Like I said, I think it's such a human element to it where it's just kind of like, no, it's just like, it was a, it was a normal reason why I mean, like, it's just, it's, it's a sad normal reason why it's not like, oh, she had some like deep, deep secrets. Like she was part of some secret or it's like, no, it was like a, such a human thing. And it's just, and I thought that was kind of a neat element to it too, because it added to like, Matt's confliction because obviously you know as I talked about in the video and kind of like the trailers and stuff set it up to be and as we saw it progressing through the season it's like Matt struggle on like am I doing the right thing like I might need to put Wilson this down once and for all because it's like the mo no matter what I do the fact of the matter is all the people he's killing and hurting now is on me because all I did I had the chance to take him out permanently I didn't I let my moral compass get in the way like my beliefs and everything get in the way and now he's free and everything but kind of all that stacked on top of it, it's just kind of like, because Matt pushes people away because he's afraid of them getting hurt. But more so than anything, it's like he's afraid of getting hurt because he doesn't want to be left alone again. Because it's interesting because there's even a storyline like tying in with Maggie where it was like she used to come to his bedside all the time and hold his hand. And then eventually she stopped. And after that moment, he never asked anyone at the church for anything ever again because it's... I think, you know, maybe on some subconscious level, he kind of knew that was his mom. And it's just kind of like that moment. Just, But it was just kind of fed into the aspect of like, oh, yeah, another person abandoned me. Let let go. You know, it's time to let go. And I thought it was kind of interesting, too, because I think, uh, was it Maggie who ended up saying it later on that, like, people who push you away, you, you know, that's when you have to hold on to them even tighter, you know, so... But like it's, you know, he spent so much time being alone and it's like you've been there at any point in time. You could have just came into my life, but you didn't. You know, my dad didn't say anything about it. You didn't say anything. And that, that in itself also like that was a trippy aspect of it. I did see coming. I was like, oh, man, the whole Wilson Fist thing is all in your head. Well, some of it was. And I was like, that's so interesting because I guess it's almost like that angel and devil on your shoulder type of situation. Um, it's kind of crazy to see what that really would mean in Matt's case, him being the devil and everything. So I guess it's like. Wilson Fisk being on his shoulder is the even bigger devil. It's like, you know, the part of the war that's raging inside of him between the Matt Murdock and uh, the devil, you know, Daredevil. Like, those sides of him battling, and it manifested itself as Fisk saying all the things that Matt thought just to kind of... It's kind of like, oh, yeah, the, the fact of the matter is this is your fault. You failed. You should come and get me. Try and come and kill me. Like, oh, this, this and that kind of taunting him because it just it was all in Matt's head. I get you know, and it didn't turn out to be like, oh, did he suffer brain damage or something like that? It was like, no, it was just kind of like, no, like I said, it was his consciousness, you know, the dark side of him beating him up because it's like, oh, you failed. You failed over again. Just kind of beating him up with his failures and stuff. But I did like that one point where it's kind of like his dad and then it shifts over from his dad being like, oh, you got to stop pretending like you don't know. The fact that the matter is you wear a mask because you enjoy beating people up. You just want an excuse to make you feel like you were important, that you matter. And it shifted over to Fisk. I thought that was kind of like a nice transition in that regard. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I, there's, like I said, there's a lot to talk about. So let's kind of break everything down. Uh, a lot of amazing action scenes. It seems like they try to throw at least one in every season where they do like the continuous shot, like him in the prison. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, not even geared up. That's also another thing, too, I was actually kind of shocked. I almost halfway expected him to suit up again, but I guess he did kind of hold steadfast to that. I mean... Well, everything that goes down with Melvin, which we we finally got introduced to uh, Betsy. She's his parole officer. That, that's interesting. But um, he doesn't wear the suit again. I mean, there is that other one that's there. I don't know if he ever plans on getting back into that or not. For now, it seems like he's going with the black. Maybe, a, like I said, it depends on how things kind of go in the future. But uh, that kind of shocked me that he never suited up again. Any fights of him and uh, Dex were pretty cool. Um, uh, obviously him being bullseye, 
um, not your Colin Farrell bullseye. Because that's what I was wondering. Is like, is that what he typically looks like in a comic book? Right it seems like he legitimately wears a suit, which it seems like the Netflix stuff is kind of steering away from like the more comic booky regards of like, oh, like the suits and stuff like that. Because he literally, I think his traditional outfit is like this black suit with like legitimately a giant bullseye on top of it. Kind of similar to like the hat he was wearing in the flashbacks, Dax, when he was younger. Um, that's probably something that also took me by surprise. I didn't know that we would have the whole aspect of Dex being like an FBI agent. I was like, what? Especially when he saved Fisk going like, yo, like those precise shots and everything. I was like, that was crazy. Also, the fact is that like, like I thought Bullseye was just going to be some random person that uh, uh, Fisk hired. Also, really quickly, I'm going to bring this up just because it, it's a funny thing. I think I brought it up in, was it The Thoughts and Theories? Or was it like a random video? I don't remember. I think it was The Thoughts and Theories. I might have cut it out, but I'm sure it might have stayed in the video. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to talk about it. It's actually funny. Like, if you don't, like, I didn't realize this until now because of the introduction of Bullseye. But this Daredevil series is doing the movie, but over the course of three seasons. What I mean is, who were the main antagonists that popped up in Daredevil uh, the movie with Ben Affleck. You had Electra played by Jennifer Garner, Bullseye played by Colin Farrell, and you also had um, Michael Clark Duncan as Wilson Fisk. Subsequent characters that have popped up in this season. It's just kind of interesting in the long, in the grand scheme of things. I'm like, huh? Like, was that on purpose? Was I don't know if that was something they planned out, or is that traditionally how that kind of? I don't, I don't know. It's just, I just, just think it's funny. You just pick these three particular characters to do that with. I mean, obviously they added in Punisher, so it's not like that crazy and out there. But you know, and they went further with the hand and everything. But I think that popped up in the Electra movie, didn't it? I could be remembering it wrong. I don't really remember the Electra movie that well. But nevertheless, that was just kind of something I was randomly thinking about. But um, yeah, like I thought Dex was just going to be some like hired gun or something like that. It's like, nope, it took Wilson Fisk like breaking him down. Because I thought that was so interesting because it's like, no, nah, he's kind of been like this as a kid. And I thought that was kind of neat too that they kind of set it up to be like, oh yeah, uh, Dex is a lot like Matt. They both have exceptional gifts that they got when they were younger. Matt enhancing his senses and being able to fight the way he does. And uh, Dex being able to do what he can with like ricocheting stuff, which gets crazy. Ricocheting bullets, objects, whatever the case may be. Like the first time, uh, they fought each other, I thought that was crazy. Just kind of like, like Matt think he's safe behind a corner and then Dex will like ricochet like some, like something and it'll hit like, uh, Matt. I thought that was kind of, uh, crazy. But, uh, kind of going back to it, like Dex's whole situation of like, we can definitely tell early on he had some issues, kind of abandonment issues to the extent like, oh, he grew up without a family. That's the point I was going to make. I was kind of lost track of myself a little bit, but it's kind of like, oh, yeah, Matt and him are kind of similar. Obviously, Matt didn't go down a route he did because from a very young age, he uh, Dex killed people. He kind of used his gift for bad. But for him, it's just like because he was so consumed with like, oh, not having any parents around, he felt alone like he was abandoned. Very similar to Matt. And he lashed out the moment people didn't let him do what he wanted to, like the coach. It's like, you know, wait, I'm perfect in this game and you're kicking me out. I hope that would bring my parents back. It's like, no, I got to let everyone else play. He ricochets the ball and it's a potential. Like, I'm, I'm, the way he talks about it, it's kind of like, nope, kill the coach. And then the whole thing with his therapist, like he wants to kill her to punish her for dying on him. It's like, yeah, Dax is super messed up. And I thought it was so interesting, the whole thing with him and Julie, that played out the way it is. The moment he started talking to her, and she just like, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, it's nice that Fisk set that up for you. I was like, oh, so, okay, so he's trying to manipulate in that regard. And then Dex kind of messed everything up because it's like he started talking about stuff he shouldn't know. And then also, also the fact is he worked at a suicide hotline was kind of crazy because at one moment you see like, he was kind of like, at moments, no one was around. He's like, okay, you know, rather than trying to kill yourself, shouldn't you try to go after that, uh, stepfather that's calling you so much trouble and then, he, and then he goes back to reading the list and it's like wow just because it seemed like maybe he was infatuated with julie like obviously being the stalker that he was in every regard but it's like he wasn't infatuated in her in the sense of he loved her in that regard it was more like she was a perfect example of what it was basically he needed to find out what it was like to be a normal well-adjusted human being and so he wanted to copy her every move i think maybe on some level it was kind of affection affection but remember like mercer uh, dr mercer had to teach him empathy because it was kind of something he didn't know which is like that in itself is a very very scary sign so i thought that was kind of pretty nice but uh yeah 
uh, him showing up at the, like, uh, you know, obviously cut to him, like, you know, dressing up like Daredevil. Um, it just took, like, Wilson Fisk, like, pushing him in certain regards, getting him off, off his meds. He had this, like, because, like, because I was like, oh, does he have some kind of form of OCD the way he straightened everything down? It's like, no, by keeping his place tidy, it's about kind of keeping himself in control. But obviously, uh, Fisk pushed him to points where it's kind of like, okay, like, his job was being uh, brought into question, the very job that kept him balanced. Then the whole thing with... Uh, Julie, which I didn't see that coming, Fisk killing her. I was like, oh, maybe he's going to pay her off or something like that, or maybe paid paid her to be there, which, I mean, he did. He paid her to kind of work there, sure, but the whole point was to get them close, and then, like, you know, just when Dax is kind of good, like, push him over the edge, you know, so... You can make the argument the poor bastard never stood a chance, but at the same time, he still kind of did his own thing. I thought it was kind of interesting because you could tell, like, he's falling further and further. Anytime, like, the buzzing would kind of get louder and he'd kind of have to scream it all away. That kind of showed you how far he was kind of losing control and everything, so. I thought that was kind of neat because, like, Fisk was manipulating him in the sense of, like, oh, I see you for who you are. Like, no one else is going to appreciate you the way I do. No one's going to see you the way I see you. So that was really interesting. The whole besmirching, like, uh, like that whole thing kind of worked out the way I did when he, like, the whole besmirching uh, Daredevil's name kind of worked out the way I did, thought it would and didn't at the same time. Just because initially he wanted to create a villain in a city, yes, to make himself more of a hero, but not in a regard that I thought he was going to. Like, from the very beginning, people hated him. It's like, oh, you're this and you're that. But then, like, he switched the narrative the moment. It's like, oh, yeah, like, all my convictions were overturned. No further charges are being against me. Yeah, because it was all planted by Daredevil. Look at the man. He's going around here attacking tur churches and attacking uh, newspaper places. You know, when he killed everyone at Bullet and did not see that coming. Um, that actually really surprised me. Um, also, like, the whole... Uh, Father uh, Latham's uh, death, too. That kind of shocked me. I kind of should I kind of figured the moment things were kind of turning, like when he was saying what he was saying during the sermon, I was like, oh, during Mass, I was like, you're, don't tell, are you about to, and yeah. Especially because it's just like, we're him and Matt, we're at the same time, because it's like, Matt was pissed at him, because it's like, you kept that secret for so long. You knew exactly who my mom was. All the times I went confessing to you about everything, and you held on to all these secrets and truths and you know just all these lies is just made it makes every word that came out of your mouth a lie all those things you try to preach to me and tell me all these lessons you try to teach me meant nothing now it's also crazy too like uh this kind of goes back to what i was talking about the beginning of the season kind of being a little slower but it kind of makes sense because matt's not at back at 100 percent like legitimately uh got his ass kicked earlier in the season just because he wasn't back at 100 percent like his whole like his what was it his right ear wasn't back it was still kind of a little messed up and i thought it was kind of interesting and he kind of took it as a sign like literally when his hearing kind of fully comes back the first thing he hears with his hearing back at full strength is man Wilson Fisk is let out because of the whole thing with the uh, cops, which played out kind of like I figured as much. I was like, yeah, you're a criminal. You, of course, you have the connections to bring down other organizations. So that would give you leeway and stuff. But then there's the whole him getting shivved in prison thing. I was like, oh, man, like I was thinking, like, is he trying to twist this to make it seem like he really has changed because he didn't kill the guy? But it turns out later on, it's like, no, that all was staged. And I was like, maybe not killing him and showing him mercy was supposed to be a, being like, a, oh, no, like, oh, he obviously has changed and everything. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting that because I was like, it didn't cross my mind. I thought, like, ultimately wanting to get back to Vanessa was, you know, what motivated him to be like, OK, like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys. I figured, like, obviously he's going to get what he wants to, but it didn't cross my mind in the long run because I was thinking like, OK, getting back to Vanessa is all he wants, but it's just it is the most important thing. But there are other things along with it. obviously Vanessa is the most important thing. But uh, and also that lawyer Donovan, that SOB really, really gets around like bouncing from Harlem to Hell's Kitchen, like, he, yeah, if there's someone despicable in the, uh, in the New York area, uh, in the Marvel Universe, you know he's gonna be all over it, so, that's always interesting. But to know that Fisk, like, you know, set the whole thing in motion, even the fact is that he's manipulated, like, he's got so many people under his thumb, like, 
because I'm, I'm gonna talk about Ray's storyline because Ray's storyline kind of surprised me because like from the beginning you're kind of like oh don't be a dick Ray because like Ray's only doing things because it's like okay his family's in a situation that it's in and he's trying to milk this Fisk situation for as much as he can so it's kind of like you're not willing to see a lot of the stuff that people bring up later on because you're benefiting from this situation and you, you know he kind of finally admits it later on but it's like you don't want to go back to just being some regular FBI agent so it's like okay there's that but there was all you know because it would you know but you later on when you hear him and Hatley talk about it, you're kind of like okay you kind of understand because everything that they discovered because of Wilson Fisk everything would kind of become undone so you wouldn't want that but it's just like they're so hesitant to not believe anyone in that situation maybe go uh. so that's why it made me kind of think like oh Ray's kind of a little shitty isn't he because he's just kind of like taking advantage of the situation, but then you kind of find out, no, Ray's actually a good guy. Yeah, in the long run, it's like, he was doing this because of family reasons and stuff like that. He got caught up with his pride and his ego, sure, but in the long run, he was a good guy, and then he got caught up in the whole thing, because when the time came for it, he came forward and everything, Sally went to the wrong people, with the whole Hetley killing win situation, I was like, oh man, Ray's about to get it, it's like, no, Hetley was like, I like you, so I did this to make sure that you were okay, you know, it's just like, and now you're in Fisk pocket, and then, you know, he ended up doing a lot of stuff he didn't want to, he helped Karen out at a church, you know, he went along with the whole, like, Foggy calling uh, Brett situation, so, that in itself, was, it, it, it's just sad that things kind of played out the way they did because it's like, yeah, he made some mistakes. He was willing to take punishment for it. It's like, hey, if I got to go to five years, like that, that's nothing. Then uh, even the whole like, you know, trusting in Matt and Foggy to get him through this because it meant protecting his family. Um, I thought it was so interesting, like, that little segment of, like, he's like, you could hear everything that was happening in the courtroom, right? You know that it's a little creepy, right? And Foggy's like, oh, yeah, he knows that it is, kind of joking like that, so. It's sad in the long run what happened with Ray, but Ray's sacrifice in the end kind of brought uh, Fisk down uh, with his recording and his, because he knew, like, in the long run, like, if things continue like this, eventually Fisk would not just go after him, but his family. But it's like, if I'm removed from the situation, then they won't have to worry about it. He even told his wife and um, to like, hey, go to the FBI, kind of denounce me, call me a monster and stuff like that. That way they won't think you know anything. And it, it's just so sad because he never really got the chance to really make it up. And he kind of did by, you know, exposing all of this because he admitted like, hey, I made some mistakes. Because you know, even in the end, like, Foggy and Matt didn't want him to serve any time. Like, even when it was all said and done, Matt kind of felt bad because it's like, Ray was a man that was kind of stuck in a terrible situation. Yeah, he did some shitty things, but he was just, you know, like a lot of people, he was put in a very bad spot by uh, Fisk, because that's what Fisk does. He finds your uh, weakness, and he takes advantage of that situation. Because it turns out, everything in that regard with Ray was planned out. Like, his sister, his sister-in-law losing coverage, him being in a desperate money situation he was in, that was the whole point so that he could force Ray under these circumstances. Which, in the grand scheme of things, is like, man, that SOB Fisk really did think about it. I mean, to be fair, he had two years to think about it. It's also sad, you know, well, not um, sad in some regard, because you know that kind of fuels him a little bit, is the whole aspect you do learn that his mom died while he was in prison, so. But I think it's so insane that he came up with so much of that, you know, just like, because every time Matt was like, I plan on doing something, that bastard, you know, I uh, had, like, was five steps ahead of me and everything, uh, the whole, like, Jasper Evans situation and all of that. I was actually surprised too, really quickly. Um, cut, I didn't really talk about it much, but like Bullseye is actually really good, even in close quarters. I wasn't expecting that because even Matt was caught off guard because like he's never really faced anyone with like, like obviously he went up against the hand, but typically like he's never going up with someone as much skills as him. That's why he was like, "Yo, got to wear the uh, Muay Thai ropes around my arms and also make sure I get in close because I don't want to fight this bastard close distance. I mean, uh, far uh, from a distance." Also, that three-way fight between uh, Bullseye, uh, Daredevil, and uh, Fisk was pretty badass. It's because they're kind of like jumping from one another because he's trying to make sure that uh, Bullseye doesn't kill Vanessa, but also kicking his ass and uh, Fisk ass. And it's just like, I do like that there is still that element of Fisk being like superhumanly strong because there's at one point he punches the wall and it hurts his fist, but you still see that the wall is cracked. Even the fact is he broke Bullseye's back against the wall. That was pretty like, ugh. 
And he did all that while he had wounds in his uh, stomach from the glass that Bullseye shot at him. Those those are actually pretty dope moments where it's just kind of like you see him kind of like weaponizing things. Like in the church, he weaponized those beads and threw them like bullets. And just like everything becomes a weapon in his hands because he can ricochet it. And it's just kind of like it's crazy the things that uh, Bullseye could do. Um, cause I also thought it was kind of interesting, like Matt using it all against him and being like, oh yeah, what about Julie? He's like, what about you? How do you? It's like, nope, Fist killed her. And it's like, oh wow, you're going to use that against them. That's pretty interesting. What other things? Oh, since I'm talking about Fisk, the whole Vanessa thing kind of surprised me, but at the same time, I'm not too surprised. I mean, she was super okay with everything he was doing in season one, so I'm, but like, she came back a little depressed. I was like, oh, what happened in that regard? I was like, well, what's that all about? And it's like, oh, it's kind of interesting, kind of in an evil, twisted way, because she was like, I feel so lonely, because even when I'm here with all these people around, and even you around, I feel like I'm not really with you, and it's like, because you keep me at arm's length, I want to be a part of everything. She's even the one that suggested, like, hey, take care of Ray, because... Uh, what his testimony and stuff could be used against us and stuff like that. So that in itself was kind of like, oh, she is not afraid to get her hands dirty. So that's kind of like, yeah, kind of a main ma uh, uh, match made in him. That's what I was kind of wondering when it was all said and done. I was like, okay, so either Bullseye is going to end up killing Vanessa and that's going to cause a problem. Or I thought like Fisk was going to die and Vanessa was going to be the new kingpin or something. I thought that might be something they were setting up, but it's like, no, nope, not the case at all. Uh, but I like when it came down to it because, I, you know, I, I was bringing it up earlier, the big debate Matt had because at every point it's like, OK, we take fist down the legal way. It didn't work over and over again to the point. It's like, hey, I have no choice. I have to put fist down because they were literally this close to getting to him through the legal means. But then the jury got, you know, hit by a fist because he had eyes and ears everywhere, knows just what to say and do to get people under his control. So it's almost like it was felt like it was like an uphill battle. I was like, how do you fight someone like this? Um, so that was uh, interesting in that regard. But uh, Matt at the very end, like beating the smack out of him like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually scared. I was like, is he going to actually do it? Is he going to do it? It's also interesting, too, because that painting in general uh, got the blood on it. That was actually kind of sad because Fisk, I was actually kind of surprised Fisk didn't do it himself getting the picture. Because I thought he was going to, like, at some point I was kind of like, are you going to hurt this lady? It's like, no, because it's like, oh, because I want you to keep it because that's what Vanessa would want and that's what I want. So, but then Dex went and got it anyway because it's like, oh, I'm your new James Wesley. So I'm the one you can rely on. Like I said, it's kind of crazy that he just became so, you know, because he kept looking for a North Star, you know, and Fisk became that because it's like, oh, I accept you as you are. So it's like, no, you know, it's like, you know, it, like I said, in a weird, sad, twisted way, he was looking for love. Like he wanted acceptance for somebody, you know, and and it's like Fisk accepted you as you are because you were a means to an end. You were a tool for him to use. So, But I liked Matt's line to uh, Fisk at the end basically being like, I win. I beat you. You're not going to like, you know, you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail. And if here you don't know my identity. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't keep my secret and if you come after Foggy or Karen, I will come after uh, Vanessa for, you know, like suggesting uh, Ray's death. And it was kind of like, and that kind of shut him down. I thought it was kind of interesting. I wasn't ac actually expecting that Felix dude to talk like he did until Matt pulled him off, pushed him off the roof. And you can hear his legs snap from the rope, you know, suddenly stopping him like that. He just, I wasn't, I just wasn't expecting him to give up any information like that. Um, all the things that went down this season, uh, got to talk about like Foggy being the most persistent person. We actually got a little dive into his family situation, him trying out to be like the next uh, district attorney because Tower wasn't doing his job because Tower wasn't willing to see what was happening in front of him. Like literally Foggy kept trying to warn him, but he wouldn't listen because I think it was just for him. It's just all oh, he saw were the victories in front of him. It's like, hey. Like, Fisk is giving us some good information, but it's like, you are literally, have you forgotten all that he's done before? Like, I think you let it slip your mind thinking like, oh, while he was in prison, things changed. It's like, no, even while in prison, he had so much power. He was literally eating at the beginning of the season, and he said quiet, and everyone in the prison was like, shut up. And it's like, it shows you how much power that man has, and it's like, you think. It was, it was just, I don't know, like, I think in his case, it was ego and pride, too. Ultimately, Foggy coming to him about all of this eventually kind of changed things. It caused Foggy to not run for um, 
DA anymore. It's also interesting to think about where him and Marcy are, because it's just like where you think about where they started at uh, back in season one of Daredevil, where it's just kind of like, oh, she's an ex, and it's like, oh, you're a good person or not, and it's like, oh, hey, you have a good, kind heart, because she gets like very protective of Foggy, because she gets worried about her. She's the one that suggested, it's like, the best way to protect yourself from um, Fisk is if you put yourself in a spotlight. If you do that, like, he can't do anything to you. When, you know, once you've made it public, and she's the one that's kind of always been in his corner in that regard. Um, even that moment, like, Foggy came back after the bullets in, in, incident, and it's like, oh, she's there on the bed with the phone in her hand. You're like, yeah, you can tell she was freaked out, you know? For now, it seems like the whole, um, you know, Foggy running for DA probably won't happen because he kind of had to endorse Tower, but it's kind of like, eh, you know, and Tower gets all the credit for it when, it, in all honesty, him... Karen and Matt did all the legwork, but hey, sure, you do all, we literally warned you and you didn't want to listen, so yeah, sure, thanks. So I'm curious to see what that really means in the long run, maybe someone else would kind of step up that would kind of like have, you know, people's, intent. I don't know, like I said, he, he seems like a good guy, but it does seem more like he is just kind of like a misguided good guy in some regards, where it's just kind of like, he doesn't handle the situations like the best way that he should. You know, I guess he doesn't have the foresight in some regards, so it's almost like he's putting his position first before the people of Hell's Kitchen. That's kind of how it was. I mean, that's why so many cops had Foggy's back. It's like, no, 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 we believe in what you're doing and stuff like that, so... Like, multiple times, people are like, yeah, like, I, yeah, we believe in you. Like, the fact of the matter is you want to take down Fisk, like, and all the terrible things that he's done, you know, so... Then there's a whole side with Karen, uh... I kind of guess right in certain regards. I, I figure she might end up telling Matt about the whole uh, her killing Wesley thing. Came up in, for multiple things. It's like, hey, she told Foggy. Didn't see that coming. And then also she told Fisk when she wanted him to like th do something. Because it's like, especially because he got underneath her skin by being like, oh, it's Matt Murdock, Daredevil. And then like caught her off guard. And then him getting all gloaty about it. That's where she kind of felt like I had it. You know, she, that was part of the plan anyway. But I think it's just at that moment, the way he made her feel like she was off, caught off guard. Wanting to catch him even more off guard. So I thought that was kind of pretty interesting. But, um, yeah, like, the fact is that um, she told Matt about that was kind of interesting. And it kind of worked out the way I thought it would because Karen going through that kind of pro probably played a part in, you know, eventually Matt's decision. Because that's why Matt wasn't judging her too harshly about what she did. You know, he's like, why didn't you tell me? But for her, it's like, you look at me as such an innocent person, and I didn't want to take the chance you wouldn't look at me like that. She it, she thought it was nice that he looked at her like that, because obviously she has her whole past with her brother, because that was kind of interesting. We learned a little bit about it earlier on in this season, but then, like, later on when she's calling her dad, like, oh, I want to come home. Is it okay if I... And he's like, no, 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 not right now. And she's like, I, all I try to do is do the best that I can. It just doesn't always work out. Her dad's like, well, that's all. That's how it is always with you. Good night. And I was like, why is he such an ass? Uh, turns out there's a reason for it. It's because Karen was taking drugs at the time. The whole douchebag. Whatever happened to that douchebag she was dating at the time, Todd? He's the one that beat her brother half to death with like a, a tire iron. And Karen had to shoot him. And I love him being like, are you crazy? Yeah, coming from the dude that's literally about to beat her brother to death. To be fair, he set your trailer on fire and stuff like that. You kind of, in retrospect, you're kind of like, yeah, he is kind of an asshole because he was like, oh, you're so lucky your sister's hot. It's like, should you really be saying something like that? So it kind of shows you he didn't really care about her like that, even though he made it seem like he did, you know? But it's kind of sad because you kind of understand the situation Karen came from, like her whole messed up situation of her dad being invested in so much in this town and just like buying a $5,000 grill, even though we don't know how we're going to pay for it. The place is barely hanging on. It's the last piece of mom. That's the only reason why dad is latching on to it. And for Karen, it's kind of like mom hated this place. She was dying long before she started dying of cancer. Because like, sadly, Karen kind of got fit in his mode of like, she had to be the responsible one. It's like, I'm, I'm supposed to be going off to college, living my own life. But here I am looking after my brother and my dad. It's like, that's too much for me. Like, isn't a parent supposed to be looking after their child? But she has to be the one that's there. That's why she stuck around so long, because she was being responsible. Then the whole accident leading, leading to her bro uh, brother's death and her father blaming her. So I don't know if that's something that will ever remedy between their family. Because he was like, I don't ever want to see you, you know. 
and he asked her to leave, and she probably hasn't ever been back home. Like, that was probably the first time she'd call her dad in probably years. To be fair, they probably have stayed in contact in some shape or form, but it was because she was just at her lowest because of the whole bulletin thing. Like, because she blamed herself because it's like, I set that all in motion. I threatened um, Jasper Evans' son, so that kind of forced him to go to the bulletin where a lot of innocent people died because of it. It's also kind of interesting, like, the back and forth between him and Ellis, her and Ellison. Uh, this season, like her t trying to take stories about Fisk and him being like, uh, no, because you're biased, which is so interesting because it's like, I feel like you should be okay with bias when it comes to Wilson Fisk. But at the same time, I guess as like, you know, because with the world of, uh, I guess, uh, mainstream media, people are reluctant to believe it. And if they see your bias in it, it's like your, your job as journalists and reporters is to be as unbiased to give the truth and nothing more so i you, you do see that front of things but still it's also interesting because they try to like set her up on a date with uh his nephew jason nothing else really came up beyond that so so this season kind of left things in a very interesting place where it seems like in general there's been a lot of loss but it seems like in general they kind of walked away with the win uh, Fisk is back in jail. As long as Vanessa's safe, he'll keep up his end of the deal. I mean, he'll probably, st I don't know. I doubt he's even in a position right now where he even worm his way around it. Because at the very least, Vanessa was away before. So there was no like, like anyone getting to her. But now it's like she's back in town and they're married now too. And she wants to be a part of everything. But who's to say Vanessa doesn't like so try to pick up his criminal enterprise? Like, because it'd still be something we see, but could still. That could be an issue with Matt and everything. Uh, we do see uh, Foggy, uh, Karen, and Matt, you know, being, you know, Nelson, Murdoch, and Paige. So I thought that was pretty neat. And she's like, I'm not a lawyer. It's like, yeah, you're a you're a great investigator. A much more stable investigator than Jessica Jones. It's like, of course, throw Jessica under the bus like that. There's also, like, another cameo kind of reference, too. There was that, uh, what was that dude's name? Uh, Schieber? Schieber? Um, cause I'm pretty sure he was like, he took over things in season one of Luke Cage, if I remember, at one point in time. Or was that during, no, 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 I think it was during Defenders he took over, um, uh, in, uh, the precinct that Misty works at, I think, I could be remembering that wrong. Yep, it's just, it's the same dude, that, that's what I know from Defenders, not Luke Cage season one. Uh, we see Bullseye getting surgery at the end and just see kind of like the zoom in on his eye of getting like the Bullseye. It is probably like, now in retrospect, it's like we probably won't ever get to see them kind of dress up. Like they probably won't be like their suit. They'll probably just remain the way they are. Potentially, I don't know. That all depends on what the future holds in that regard. But um, like I said, it's so interesting because Matt doesn't have the suit at the end, whether or not he'll get that back. Also, like, you know, things between him and his mom are interesting because it's like, you know, uh, Latham kind of was like, that person for Matt to kind of steer him in the right direction. He's like, I can you need someone like that every once in a while. And his mom is kind of like, you know, I am a nun after all. That is my job. So I think that's pretty good that, like, you know, he was so kind of consumed with hatred and everything like that. But now he's kind of got a different perspective on it where he's kind of like, in all honesty, maybe, you know, because at such a young age, he was pissed. He was wondering, like, why did God take my eyesight from me? But it's like, maybe this is all part of God's plan that maybe thing, because because things played out the way they did, no matter how shitty things were, not having his mom kind of feeling like he was all alone, it led to him becoming Daredevil. And it's like, yeah, there's some people that have died on his watch, but there's also been a lot of other people that were saved. And it's like, so in the long grand scheme, of things maybe it worked out for the better you know but that's probably the thing that i think i probably walked away from this liking the most too is the fact is that the, the trio are back together doesn't really say where matt and karen stand they're still the whole friend situation um that gets even more complicated because of the electro situation like i said whatever that ends up being i don't think we're done with electro but i mean who knows for sure um but it's like, because each subsequent season, they've had issues. Oh, I forgot to talk about, I thought it was such an interesting thing, that basically they went back to basically after uh, Matt confessed to Karen that he was Daredevil at the end of season two. We kind of get a little of that aftermath of her, like, not being able to handle that. Well, not, not, not that she isn't able to handle it, but just her reaction to the whole thing and him explaining everything, being able to tell when people are lying, being able to smell things like... You know, his enhanced senses and stuff like that. And just the whole 
crazy situation around that and her kind of processing. I thought that was kind of like a little nice small detail to kind of circle back to because it's like, yeah, because the next time we pick up with Karen and Matt is the Defenders where they're kind of in that situation because it was for him being like he didn't need to be Daredevil anymore. He didn't want to be Daredevil, which is funny because now we see like, it was like, oh yeah, because immediately sometime after that, the events of Defenders happened where you suited up as Daredevil again, so... What was it Matt in a twisted way joked one time he was kind of like, oh yeah, if people found out I was Daredevil at the very least I'd get arrested and maybe they put me in a cell right next to um Fisk. You know, it's actually kind of, well, it's actually kind of interesting because there's a whole thing. Because remember the, um, God, what's, I'm blanking on it. Um, the group that Fisk throws under the bus, like, uh, Matt ends up talking to their leader, Vic, in jail. And it's like, oh, promising to get him back, locked back up because it's like, oh, this way he's with you and you can do whatever you want to. They never circle back to that storyline wise, but like, that's still kind of set up. So, I mean, to be fair, Whisk, uh, Whisk, Fisk having the connection that he does, like, he probably, like, be able to handle his own even in prison like that. It probably, it, no, it'd definitely be hard to kind of take him down. He's kind of a tough SOB in that regard. So. Like I said, it it does seem like this season ended off with, like, probably, like, the least big cliffhangers. I mean, the only cliffhanger is kind of, like, the bullseye situation we kind of see. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, he's not potentially not paralyzed and what that can mean. I mean, maybe he'd come after Matt. I mean, I don't, I don't know, like, what reason would he have to come after Matt? I mean, maybe he'd blame Matt for, like, everything in his life kind of turning upside down. It's like, oh, I found some good stuff again, and it's like, you messed that up for me? Who knows? Uh, obviously, this is me recording this Friday night. Uh, new season just came out, so I have no idea if this is coming back for a fourth season or not. Um, I am curious to see in that regard, just because it's like, you know, obviously things. I know Jessica Jones is coming back. Obviously, sadly, um, Iron Fist isn't. I think Luke Cage is still up in the air the last time I checked. I don't know. Maybe they made a final decision. I just haven't checked in, in a while to see. But, uh, yeah, I'm just curious to see, like, where this will all go. Like where, like I said, where Daredevil goes next. Like, what happens to the whole Melvin situation? Will uh, Matt and Foggy try to get him out? Will he kind of give Matt an even newer suit? Like, who are some potential villains we could potentially see in the future? Because it is kind of nice that this kind of all circled back around. Because, like, obviously, like, you see the parallels between Season 1 and Season 3. Kind of like Matt kind of going back to black. Kind of putting away what he believed was a symbol that no longer represents him as Daredevil. You know, I think for him, he has to be, rebuild that image, you know, now that, you know, even though the truth has come out, like, still, like, um, gosh, I'm blanking, Dex kind of screwed that up, but still, it's kind of like, this all started with him being the vigilante, him being the devil of Hell's Kitchen, and now, like, you know, taking down Fisk, and now it kind of circles back to that, in that regard. Um, I'm also curious, because it's such a small detail, but the whole, like, was it Rabbit in the Snowstorm? White Rabbit in the Snowstorm, that painting? Um, that whole situation. It, I might have brought that up earlier because I kind of get, get a little lost in my thoughts when I'm recording these, especially lengthy ones and stuff like that. But uh, it being covered in blood is just kind of an interesting thing because it also fits like the whole, like, oh, yeah, Fisk has been wearing, like, the white suits all the time. I, I'm trying to remember because it's been a while. Did he wear that in Season 1 or not? I feel like he might have, but I remember, because I remember Vanessa hooking him up, like, she was tr kind of dressing him in one point. I don't remember if it was a white suit, necessarily. This might have been the first instance of it, at least, because it, it was made such an impact on me the moment I saw the teasers, because, like, oh, he's wearing a white suit, because I've talked about it before, like, I just in instinctually think of, like, the Spider-Man cartoon from the 90s on Fox, because that's, like, the traditional outfit he wore. And once again, like I've said in other videos, like, I don't know if that's his traditional outfit in a comic books. Like, it doesn't even have one in particular, but nevertheless. And um, it's actually kind of interesting, too, because now Matt's still kind of maintained, obviously, his balance of not crossing over. And I think that's something we'll probably see if the show did go forward, probably see something like him being less confused. Like, I mean, that struggle of just everything that he'd lost, because Fisk is that opponent who's taken everything from him because even in like season two like he wasn't really dealing with an enemy that really took a lot from him like fisk found a way to destroy and burn everything and hurt a lot of people like no one else could so he caused a lot of collateral damage so that kind of weighed a lot on matt so that made him question the whole like oh should i cross that line or not you know so because it's kind of even interesting because even at the beginning you know he ended up you know when we saw the flashback of after he told karen at the end of season two he's like yeah, I'm, I'm very different from frank i've never killed anyone and you know frank's well frank so 
which is interesting because subsequent, I mean, it never came up, but like obviously this is after Cameron ran into him during the events of Punisher One. So I'm curious. I said Punisher One, uh, Punisher Season One, and I'm curious to see how any of this will kind of pop up or go forward in that regard because that's still something we got something to look forward to to season two of the punisher which i'm curious because like like i brought it up i've talked about before in season one they never really reference a lot of stuff from um the greater mcu like the only reference it's like karen and mahoney like brett popping up like other than that there's no other real connections I can say in general, I'm just curious what this will mean. Also, Matt being alive, what does it mean for Jessica, Luke, and even Danny? Like, you know, like I said, even with the whole Iron Fist situation, it'd be kind of interesting to be like, oh my god, Matt, you're still alive. And like, I'm sure we're still not 100% done with the Midland Circle situation because it's like, because even Karen was diving into that and it's like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff still not really being answered about that. A lot of stuff is being covered up. I mean, we know like a lot of high officials are connected to that. So there, like I said, there has to be strings still being pulled for nothing to come out about that. I mean, to be fair, no one really wants to admit what got con- like con- what all went down there. So it's kind of let's leave that as it is. So who knows, you know? So like I said, I'd be very interested to see what they would do with the fourth season. Obviously, Bullseye would probably set up more primary as an antagonist potentially but maybe they'd set someone else up i don't like i honestly don't know because like i said it didn't seem like this had like the big cliffhanger of like ooh, like except for the whole bullseye thing because it seems like everything else is kind of like good so like i said i'm still hoping they could bring it back for a fourth season because i'd love to see what they do but uh really that's all i want to talk about this video episode <laughs> To next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.